Yeah. Yes. It's Michael. I, I just had a quick question, actually. I, it's been a Michael, long time. Wait a second, Michael. Try and sit still and, and get centered while you ask the question. Oh, you... sure. Okay, I thank you. I just had to lean forward to unmute. Um, it, it's just a very quick question. It's been a long time, and I want to make sure I'm doing the Rudy breath correctly. And I'm just wondering if you can just quickly tell me. I uh, it seems like it. I can go over it if you want, and uh, and you know, let me just go over the breathing, the double breathing exercise. It's only good for you. It's good for everybody. Thank you. I hear this every so often. Okay. Um, you know, uh, usually when I tell this to people, the first thing I tell them that meditation is not a religion. Meditation is a craft, and it's a craft that really teaches you how to open the deepest parts of your inner being so that you connect your consciousness with higher energy in the universe. The tools of meditation are the mind, the breath, your need to grow, a very important tool, and the will to do it. Those four elements are essential if one wants to have a spiritual life. The mind is the strongest instrument we have, and breath is literally life. Every time you inhale, you take in life. Every time you exhale, you let go of a part of yourself. You know, the Hindus have a mantra, so hum, and you do it in, to, you know, in the rhythm of your breathing, and you inhale, you say so, you exhale, you say hum. So hum means I am that. I am one with everything. So the use of the mind and the breath consciously are extremely important elements if we're going to develop a chakra system that will enable us to have a spiritual life. There are seven basic chakras. There's a chakra in the forehead right above the eyebrows, sometimes called the third eye. There's the throat, there's the heart, there's the chakra that's right below the navel. Japanese call that the hara, the Chinese, the tatian. There's the sex, base of the spine and the top of the head. These seven chakras are a direct link between each and every human being and higher energy or God or whatever you spirit or whatever you want to call it. So the double breathing exercise was devised by Rudy as a way of developing a chakra system that's strong enough to do two things. The first one is to live in the world consciously without allowing all of the rough and tumble of life to throw us off our balance you know, to, to steal from us the very source of energy that, that is essential for us to truly be alive. So we need the kind of inner strength that can deal with the rough and tumble of life to stay balanced. Well, all, if you'll pardon my bronxies, all the bullshit goes on in the world. You know, the second element is connecting with spirit, God, higher energy, whatever one wants to call it. And that energy is an extremely powerful energy. As I've said many times in the Bhagavad Gita, when Krishna reveals himself to Arjuna, it's as if the light of a thousand suns suddenly appeared in the sky. This is spirit is not some holier than thou little, you know, quirky type of energy that, you know, people walk around, tippy toes around each other. It's really powerful energy. And we need that powerful energy to transform us inside. But we also need to build the strength in ourselves that enables us to connect with God or higher energy in the universe. So a human being is a point in a triangle that connects karma and life and activity in the world with higher energy. And that point in the triangle is located directly below the navel. That is where we can develop the strength that can enable us to live in the world and be free in the world at exactly the same time. 
And the whole double breathing exercise, its very purpose is to people to get the training in how to do this. The first step is to bring the focal point of your attention to the chakra below the navel and to ask very deeply for help to open, to surrender, to grow spiritually. Now, the mind is probably the most powerful instrument we have. It also is like a surgical instrument when it's used consciously and it will open the very core of your being. You know, as I've said many times, great singers sing from the core of their being. Great dancers dance from the core of their being. Great athletes, when they're in that zone, they're in the core of their being. It brings foundation, balance, harmony, strength. You know, and by focusing the attention there of the mind, it acts like a surgical instrument that'll open the very core of your inner life. And it, it's like the Buddha, you know, the Buddha, if you ever see statues of a Buddha, he's almost always sitting on a lotus base. This chakra below the navel is the lotus base. And we can consciously learn how to open that chakra by using the mind in a conscious way. The second element in this is opening the heart. God is love. Without love, without compassion, without kindness, without forgiveness, you know, there is no spiritual life because one has to learn how to interact with, you know, the universe, with, with life itself that way. So we need to learn to open the heart. The heart is the seed of love. Now, it's not a very complicated thing to open the heart. All we need is gratitude. We don't need to push and force and scream at our, you know, we just need to be feel grateful. Gratitude will open the heart. So you keep your attention focused below the navel where your mind is. You feel gratitude, the heart opens. Then you take a simple breath through your nostrils into the center of your chest, the air, the breath will go into the heart center and expand, you know, and strengthen the heart center. And then you hold the breath for about 10 seconds. It could be 12 seconds. It could be eight seconds, whatever you're comfortable with. And after that time, you just exhale a little bit of the air, maybe like a fifth or a third of the air, and you stop for a few seconds, and then you continue to exhale until you're comfortable. Then you immediately take another deep breath. And this time you bring all the air down to the chakra below the navel. Mind is there, the breath is there, the breath will go into that chakra, it'll expand that chakra. And by expanding that chakra, it allow energy to move through the sexual area to the base of the spine that will activate Kundalini. Again, you hold that breath in the chakra below the navel for, you know, 10 seconds, 12 seconds, eight seconds, and then you exhale a little bit of the air, you stop, and you continue to you wait a few seconds and continue to exhale, you know, until you're comfortable. Then you just breathe naturally. But throughout the entire meditation, it's really important to keep your attention below the navel. Because once the mind leaves that area, the whole system of a human being just goes right off balance. We start thinking and daydreaming and we start getting involved in all our tensions and insecurities and fears. And the key to being able to deal with all that nonsense is to keep your attention focused below the navel. That takes training. You're not gonna do that in two meditation classes. We are so conditioned to be in our heads all the time. We live that way, mostly people, until they learn how to do what I'm talking about, whether it's what I teach or somebody else teaches. You know, so we need to have patience, take the time to overcome that condition and patterns that of behavior that we have managed 
privilege to live with most of our lives and free ourselves from the one person who's keeping us from connecting with God. And that's us. If you feel energy moving through the sexual area, you bring a piece of your attention to the base of the spine and you try to draw the energy up the spine. You need five, 10% of your attention is enough and try to draw the energy up the spine to the crown chakra. And there it will accumulate. It's like, you ever see Buddhas, they always have bumps on their heads, you know? That's that accumulation of Shakti, of Kundalini. And then when that will germinate and the crown chakra will open, like call it the thousand petal lotus, and the soul of a human being will connect with the soul of the universe. That marriage gives birth to enlightenment. So it's a very simple exercise. It takes time to master it. I have patience as long as people make the effort to work on themselves. And once you master the exercise and you learn how to consciously use your mind, your breath, your will, your that tap your need to grow, when you truly tap your need to grow, it'll help you to overcome everything, all the obstacles. You're getting a taste of God, you know? That little thing in itself will, you know, demand every day of your life to overcome all of the blocks and the tensions inside. Now we do an open eye meditation, which is not ordinary in the world of meditation. Most people do closed eye meditations, but we do it for a simple reason. You know, the eyes open keep us connected with the world. So we're centered below the navel. We're using our breath to open, you know, to strengthen the chakra system. We're using gratitude to open the heart, but we're centered below the navel and we're connected to the Shakti, the spirit. At the same time, we're connected to life and our karma. So we can be connected to the higher energy and connected to life at the same time. So it's really important to keep your eyes open in the meditation. You know, also in this class, I work with everybody that's here through the eyes. That's how the Shakti is transmitted, you know, through myself to each and every one of you. You look into somebody's eyes, you see the deepest part of their being. And the eyes, I always say they're like two vacuum cleaners. They will suck in Shakti. That Shakti will go into your chakra system and it'll be act as a catalyst to, to help develop the chakra system. It's really important in the class for the eight billionth time <laughs> that people sit still. <laughs> for the eight billionth time, people have to sit still. Every time you move, I don't care if you're fidgeting with your computer, or you're doing this, you literally, if you do it in the middle of a class, you disrupt the entire energy of the class. So everybody has to respect everybody else. And they have to truly understand that one of the great disciplines of this class is staying focused, not giving in to an itch, <laughs> not giving in to a noise, not giving in to a little pain you might have in your elbow, being able to focus everything in the hara, in the third chakra, that chakra below the navel, and use it as a reason to grow instead of a reason not to grow, a reason to you know, lose your whole sense of discipline and focus. So it's really important to sit still for the eight billionth and one time. <laughs> <laughs> and the third element is the breathing. You don't do the breathing for the entire period of the class. You do it only when you need to do it. So if you start thinking and daydreaming and going off and, you know, you just refocus yourself, you know, in the chakra below the navel and you do the breathing, you feel the gratitude and you do the breathing to open yourself, to strengthen the chakra system. But if you're really open inside, the spiritual energy will come down. 
And it does a miraculous job in helping people grow much better than we can do for, it's extraordinary how that energy will strengthen the chakra system of a human being. But, you know, we think, we daydream, we go off, we, uh, you know, the mind yaks, the emotions get involved. So we have to recenter ourselves and do the breathing and open ourselves inside. It's simple to do. And it's, a, you know, it's like some miraculous thing that Rudy created. I mean, this is something that he put together through his Buddhist and Hindu studies, you know, and he did it as a way of really getting people to focus consciously living in this kind of world, this Western world that we live in. And now it's not just a Western world, no matter where you go, it's the same insanity. I mean, I've been in India 40 times and trust me, <laughs> the place is wacky as anywhere you want to go in your life, you know? And uh, everywhere, just in Florence and Paris, I, you know, it's the same tensions and kind of internal chaos that has afflicted the human race everywhere. And this exercise that Rudy created, it's not just for people, in, it's people anywhere. I mean, right now I, I do a class, I told you, on Tuesdays and Thursdays and Sundays, uh, there are people from four different continents in the class. Even today in this class, there are people from three different continents in the class. So it's not something that, hey, you know, I'm a, I live in New York and I need, you know, I mean, we live in a really crazy world and we need something strong enough to balance it and to get us connected to spirit. And that's why Rudy created this exercise. It's a miracle what he did, you know, and what he left us. To me, the most important thing that Rudy left are not all the stories and folk tales about him, but this double breathing exercise. Yeah. That is the great thing he bequeathed to everybody, this double breathing exercise. Not, you know, the 102,000 stories that every time you hear them, they have a little different twist. You know? <laughs> but what we can use, each and every one of us, to get closer to God, to open and have a spiritual life. Thank you. You're welcome. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? You know, there are people I haven't seen in 20 years, they used 25 years, used to come to my, you know, I've been doing this exercise. I've changed a lot. <laughs> I used to be a really intense guy, you know, no bullshit. Not, but, but you know, I, you know, I kind of mellowed out a lot, and I'm very grateful for that. Transform me, this meditation, truly transform me into wanting one thing in life, just to be nothing. You know. And that is almost a scary principle living in the world, but it's not because you surrender the ego, you surrender all your opinions and what's right, and you allow God to guide your energy and guide your life. It means you're opening inside to experience everything in existence that can flow through and you're not attached to anything. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Okay, if there are no more questions, there will be class on Wednesday. And I mean, you probably all, you know, look, God bless you all for being here. God bless you for dragging all of this stuff out of me, you know, because honestly, I listen to it also. 
I need to learn and grow. Your presence here is my teacher, and I'm just grateful to each and every one of you for being part of this. So God bless you. And I hope you're benefiting as much from the, these classes as I'm benefiting. Because I come back here only for one reason. I'm really benefiting. <laughs> I wouldn't come here if I wasn't benefiting from this or ever take them for granted, you know? So God bless you all. Thank you. And I'm looking forward to seeing everybody on Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you, Stuart. Night, Stuart. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Stuart. Happy, well, Stuart. Happy Rudy's birthday. Yeah, well, tomorrow's Rudy's birthday. I yeah. Think. Yes. So have a happy Rudy's birthday, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>